And welcome everybody back to the Pineapple Base of From the Depths, Season 4, Episode 3, Bud Kai, here we go. Alright, so we're <laughs> low on scrap, and we're going to get some scrappers, some smelters, we're going to customize our base today, get this whole place in order into a pineapple base that I, I've, I've imagined, I've had a dream of this, and I want to have it like all like, kind of teak style, kind of like something similar that we've done, I think, in Season 2 before. And, uh, yeah, and just, of course, fortify it. This base has got to be legit, so we're going to make it legit. And maybe we'll get around to building a vessel today so we can go out and explore past the Rocky Mountain there and see what else we could find out in the world. Because right now, oh, I guess these were, like, vehicles that were destroyed out here. Yeah, we've had fights all over this place, sunken vessels. So, yeah, we gotta build something to go out and explore. Probably will have its own fuel refinery on it just to make life a little bit simpler. Let's press R, actually. Let's see what we got here in terms of resources on our fortress. This whole time looks like we've been mining pretty good. We got fuel and all types of stuff. Yeah, there's our parts. It's the lowest thing right there. So we'll build a scrap smelter. I think, like, yeah, somewhere. Oh, and these are our oil tanks, too. Yeah, we gotta put our resources together in an armored room. I'm thinking maybe this level would be the armored room. We'll see. And just a few of the finishing touches here. Nice and easy. Going over here, and there we go. So we're kind of making a stylish little storage bay here in the back. I'm kind of focusing on this part of the ship first, or our fortress. So we got uh, all of our storage in here. I moved everything from the front bay area into here. So we got our metal storage. Everything seems to be pretty good. Yeah, we got we got decent storage on everything for oil, metal, natural scrap, and crystal. We got our crystal generation over this way. So I have some ammo boxes here next to our uh, scrappers. Just working away, encase this whole thing in some metal here, so uh, I can withstand some hits. And I like the way this is coming along. We're going to have to do a tour eventually, once I'm finished this thing, but alright. So, it's kind of, it's kind of alright. It's kind of coming along, reinforce the ceiling. Got our uh, heat decoy up there. And now it's time to continue working on, on the base. Uh, I guess I want to make a repair bay right about here. Right about here, because we already got some repair boxes and a spares crate. Got to move our little ammo supplier. Maybe I'll put this where, where the scrappers are. I don't know. That might make sense. And okay, so <laughs> just having so much fun here, building and crafting and customizing our base. Might just actually uh, make this part spiky on the end. But all right, so let's do a little bit of a tour here. Where the heck are we? Looks like we're in the storage bay here. Did some improvements to this area. Just kind of decorated it a little bit. So it just looks kind of cool. And then we have, uh, I had some buttresses here on the, on the sides of our fortress just to kind of reinforce, added some little uh, awnings, redid the windows, because, you know, it's gonna, these things are very important, you know, in the campaign, they're very important. Kind of redid the inside, expanded the staircase so we can uh, have an easier time of walking up here. And here's our control room with windows to each side, the front being, of course, armored by steel. Got our little AI thing here with just a fortress controller, patrol card, and just a regular uh, target prioritization and aim point selection. Transmitting on channel one. Wait, did that say channel one? Yeah, it did. Okay, good. And our fortress controller. So there we go. It's our little cockpit area for now. Probably we'll put a turret up here so we can face the base forward and shoot away from right in front of us. Still didn't get around to uh, customizing the engine area yet, but we're going to get on that probably next. Didn't do anything about repair bay alley, but I made some little slits here so uh, the repair bots can fly in and out of this place when we get around to getting that whole thing together. And all right, so I think that's about it. For the updates, I'm going to keep on building a little bit more here. <laughs> I want to try to add more jagged edges all around this base in general. I want this to be an aggressive looking, what do you call it, pineapple base. So I think I might have gone a little bit overboard. <laughs> but made this, this spiky pineapple birthplace of death and chaos. Pretty much that's what we got going on here. Alright, so I've just completely uh, redid this whole place. Uh, added, uh, let's see, what, what did I add since the last cut? Let's see, alright, we did our little repair bay alley. Got our little upstairs office here with our bullets creation thing here. And uh, yeah, pretty much just made this into a swing pool down here. So we got a swing pool right in our base. Added some more engines all around. A little uh, creation spawner, blueprint spawner right there. So we could spawn stuff right in front of our pool. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And we armored up our, let's see, our, our engine and fuel uh, <laughs> generating area here as well. So, yeah, this base is pretty darn pretty uh, to, to my liking. I like all the spikes everywhere. And just and, and even our tower, <laughs> even our, uh, our radio tower has got, like, spikes and weird all types of, like, totem pole semen kind of stuff. So I'm really happy with this. I think now we're going to get some more guns on here, too. Like, probably another one of these cannons right about here, the Demon Hunter cannons. And then maybe a missile launcher on top of this place here. And I think that'll be pretty good. I think, I think we'll be good to go. 
and uh, and head on out, set on out with this fortress, or maybe just make a second one. But so far, as I've been building this thing, we haven't been getting attacked at all. There's like no attacks whatsoever. So, so we've been pretty safe. And I guess yeah, it's time to go out and meet the enemy. I wanted to try to make a cross hatch. Oh, I forgot a wooden block right there. I was trying to make like a cross hatch thing on the deck. Uh, what do you call it? Like I forget how what what do you call that as? But uh, yeah, I was trying to make some cross hatch. But I, I figured we'll do it in some spots like this, some spots like that. Just <laughs> building with Budkai. Uh, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff like that. So, all right, I guess everything looks pretty good. Storage area is good. I mean, like it's not really that secure, but it, it's this is gonna be a fun ride. So, all right, time to add a cannon up here and get some local weapon controller up on it. So let's see if we can just spawn this bad boy in. I think we'll put it like right about here. And just so they're all shooting in the same direction. Kind of lined up like that. Alright, so let's go to load sub object. Demon Hunter kind of loaded this bad boy in here. And let's see, yeah, just, oh, there we go. Plop it in like just like that. We had enough resources for it. Perfect. And okay, so we got ourselves our local weapon controller attached with the wireless connector and failsafe. You know, it's always good to have a failsafe. Don't want to blow anything up. And so we got the signal coming out of here, going up here, so now both of our cannons are stocked and loaded with, with ammo. And now it's time to go ahead and build a little missile launcher here, just a tiny little one for a little aircraft that might get around here. I put it on like a one-axis turret, so it just spins around all cute style, and the missiles will shoot out and whatever. So <laughs> let's go ahead and, uh, and lock this thing, let's tilt it on its side, uh, so we can place it in here and get some six-way connectors right on top of it. Because I want to have kind of like uh, like a three three missile launcher, I think something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Just like three missiles shooting out of here vertically, and yeah. So let's get some launch pads like this. I think the launch pad will work. Yeah, it's connected. So we'll connect it there and connect it there, and boom, there we go. We got we got three launch pads, and I guess I'll make these decent missiles. I guess I'll make them four long. It's kind of like the standard for a good missile. So uh, yeah, we we'll get like a. Oh, that's right. They're gonna be sideways now <laughs> because I have them. Actually, it looks kind of cool. It looks kind of cool. We could rotate this a different way. I kind of like it like that, though. All right, so I'm just going to add some missiles on here. So we're making ourselves a short-range missile, just with one fuel tank, so probably the range of it would be about like 500 or so, and a bunch of fragmentation warheads at 45 degree cone angle uh, explosives, so that's going to be really good, and one laser designator receiver. I, I used to use the uh, heat seeker missiles a while back, but I don't know. I just I like the reliability of laser receivers better because whatever the laser's pointed at that's what uh that, that's what that's where the missile's gonna go and and uh you know they, they don't attack uh like you know hot spots so anyway okay so we're gonna assign this to all the missiles so here we go these are our short range destructive missiles that anything that gets close will get annihilated by hopefully hopefully it'll be like that might actually hit those smokestacks so i think we'll have to add a friend or foe uh thing on here as well yeah identify friend or foe Stick one of those on there, nice, connected, so we don't end up shooting ourselves. Although, I don't think we need it with the lasers, but... And then, uh, we'll also get a, um, yeah, I guess we could do a little bit of a staggered fire rate of, let's see, probably 0.02? Yeah, 0.2? That looks good. Seconds? Alright, so we'll kind of have that like that. And then down here will be the AI for it, so we'll just get, like, another AI block. Do the whole usual thing of, uh, let's see, where's it at? Wireless transmitter? Local weapon controller, right. So we'll get this bad boy down here. Oh, I can't have, Oh, that's right, because we're still building on the on the missile turret. Right, all right, let's get over here and build on the actual ship itself, not the missile. So we can stick this thing on. Yeah, so we'll put it right here. And then, bada boom, that's still underneath it, right? Yep. There we go. And another creation I've been making here is called the Tiny Pineapple. So this is going to be our little home away from home. I'm going to build a bunch of storage chests on this thing so we can go ahead and mine for oil and natural uh, resources while we're away. So we can actually take our home base out on the adventure uh, on the high seas and actually like have it be like our main base of operations supplying our fleet. I think that'd be super cool. And we'll just kind of leave these little supply pods uh, behind. I mean, like, like whatever they mine's not going to go to the global resource, but at least we'll have some areas where we'll uh, where we'll actually store resources at. So let's try to store up some oil here on this guy and something like that. And then I think we should be able to make fuel out of this. Yeah, there we go. So now it's starting to make fuel. Let's get R on here. Oops. Let's actually get a build mode for a second. Press R. So it seems like the tiny pineapple is, yeah, slowly starting to get oil, starting to create fuel. There we go. Starting to fill up our fuel tanks. Actually, they're already full. Nice. So I may do a little more of fuel storage here, but this is just for passerbyers uh, who need <laughs> who need some supplies. 
Same thing for minerals and all that stuff. We're just gonna like duplicate everything on our main base. But just have it here. Just have it here. So it's gonna have some natural storage. And there we go. See, now we're storing it up on the base. It's crazy, right? Okay. So just a whole bunch of stuff like that. The tiny pineapple is ready to go into the campaign. Now we got the smelter smelting away, getting a whole bunch of scrap. And we've had, we have every resource on here. And one thing I learned about this for, uh, for building our mobile ships later on is that is that even if we have a refinery on our mobile ships, they still need to carry or, or mine for oil to turn it to fuel. So really, fuel tanks and fuel transport is going to be so important later on to make sure everything we have is, is up and running. Uh, because one way or another, we're either going to have to carry oil, or we're going to have to carry fuel. So might as well just carry fuel and not have this huge refinery on every single ship when we don't even need that. So yeah, the transporting resources is going to be so good. But alright, so for now, this thing is good. I think it's ready to go into the campaign. And it's pretty efficient, doesn't take up much power, supplies itself, little radar dish, <laughs> totally vulnerable, but that should be the, up, up to the rest of our fleet to uh, defend these points, I feel. We might do something with it later, but alright, let's build this in the campaign, leave it, and then take off with our mother base. And we're back at the mother base. I know there hasn't been much action this episode, but there's been a whole ton of building and crafting and, and pretty much setting up for the rest of our future here. Alright, so we got the Fort Tiny Pineapple. Let's go ahead and spawn this guy in. And let's see if it actually works here. Alright, so let's just um, <clears throat> spawn him in over there. Does it work? Yes, it works. Okay, good. It's making him. It's building him. <laughs> building him under there for some reason. But that's cool, though. Yeah, there he goes. Look at, see, it's so small, so tiny. Like, almost no resources, but it should work good. Let's get ourselves on this thing, and uh, I guess fly it on up out of the water. So I think being in the water kind of messes some things up on it. So let's get ourselves a little higher. Oh wait, we're actually, we're still docked too. Let's go ahead and just undock ourselves since we are a flying ship. And it has the same AI as our fortress, so let's just turn that off so we don't smash into ourselves. It's pretty much the fortress AI uh, automatically pilots your ship to be in the center of a resource zone. So that's good for later on when we can just like leave this guy somewhere and he'll just kind of go to the uh, resource zone, but for now we don't want him doing that since we're already in it with our, this fortress. So, okay, <laughs> is it working? Yes, it's gathering, it's gathering oil, scrap, crystal, and, uh, and fuel. All this stuff seems to be working on this bad boy. All right, and we have like a little uh, builder back here too, I, I just threw on last second. So if we need to build something here, then we can go ahead and build something together. So, okay, big base is going to move forward past the mountains. I feel like we're going to go east. And the mother base is heading on out. <clears throat> so the tiny pineapple is taking over the starting zone and is mining and is gathering and is still distributing all the resources even to our mother base as it leaves, as it's sailing away. It seems like the uh, distribution force is pretty far away, or the uh, at least the range of it, so... That's pretty cool. So it's all handing out, <laughs> giving it to us as we as we head on to the promised land that I see over there, that ring. I see that ring. Oh, and we leveled up for why? Why we level up? Just because we're so cool, right? Maybe. Maybe that's why. But alright, so this is doing good. And also, just to show you guys, I know there's a lot of details this episode, but we've set all our bases to uh, keep very little fuel, very little of everything, 20%. So they're going to be just giving out tons of resources to anyone who comes by. Just like that. So I'm real happy about this. Worked out good, generating fuel, got tons of oil and resources stocked up already. Really like the way this new campaign works with localized resources. Our fortress is making it over into enemy territory right here. Strength of eight, historically, waters of the Deepwater Guard. Yes, that's right. And then our, our little base back over here is doing pretty well. Let's go to here. So we're sailing on forward like that. Gonna run into some enemies soon, <laughs> and then this is this is our, uh, our small apple. I still can't get over how cool this is with all the uh, localized resources. So we have a spares crate on board. That's what that is right there, the natural right there, and some fuel storage on this thing. And then this is all the natural resources we're we're just mining on up for building later from that point, so we can build from uh, from there. And then our main fortress over here has tons and tons of fuel stored and uh, a good amount of ammo stored, and then some spares crates as well right there, you see that green, and then a whole bunch of natural resources that it still has of on board from the last uh, mining zone it was in. So there we go, that, that makes quite a bit of sense now to me. And this is sure gonna be fun, so alright, let's wait for these guys to pop on in here, and I guess fight them. They should be just around here somewhere. Let's see, yeah, almost. And the enemies have found us. Alright, so we're, so we're kind of logging in. Appearing on the map here for a fight. 
And yeah, so so we were heading. Oh my gosh, we already destroyed one of these guys here. We're going towards the resource zone past this mountain, and the range on our guns is just ridiculous. Look at it, you could even see them cooling off there in <laughs> the distance to get this range and some amount of damage. They have a whole ton of flyers and just bad guys coming on here, but looks like we're just completely outranging them. Oh my gosh, that's great. Yes. All right, so we're taking these guys out from so far away. I chose to engage the battle from far away. But as you can see, yeah, our shots are out to here, base is over here, and I finally found out what these X's are on the map. These are like resources just scattered on the map from uh, wreckages. So if we go there, we can claim them. It's not really that big of a deal, but alright, so it seems like a few of these ships are kind of messing about. Where are we shooting now? Hang on a sec. Oh, we're still shooting forward. Alright, okay, so the tracers aren't showing right now. Okay, that's, that's fine. I'm cool with that. But alright, so it looks like they're on the way. And they have a whole armada of little puny things, <laughs> so I don't think we should be too worried about it. We should be able to do uh, to decimate them from far away. Oh gosh, but I hope we don't run out of ammo though, right? Oh no, ammo comes back on its own, that's right. Alright, that's good at least. Still got plenty of fuel. I really like these little graphs right here, it makes everything easier. So we still got fuel, still got ammo. We could shoot at these guys all day. Another explosion's happening here. Their base is doing good, turning oil into fuel, and we have big reserves of it. So we should be able to make it to this point without uh, without just running out of everything. I mean, I mean, if, if it was that intense, that'd be like crazy because we have a large storage of stuff we've been mining this whole time as we've been building in the campaign. So I think we have a good start. Uh, yeah, this guy's causing us a bit of uh, pain in the butt. So maybe we'll move closer for him. But as for everything else, I think I think we'll actually start targeting at this guy here. Yeah, let's start targeting this guy. Uh, things that aren't moving around so fast. Look at that, that's so handy, that targeting. Oh yeah, is this flyer's gonna be winding around like that for a bit. We might wait for him to get into the range of our missiles. I actually changed our missiles back to heat seekers. Uh, you know, you know how these things are. And I think we're not attacking salvage, right? Nope, so we shouldn't be shooting at these guys. We'll choose other targets. Looks like we're shooting at the flyer again, so I'll just keep choosing these bad boys right here and that should really do it yeah we'll take everything out awesome AI dead in, in an instant and one last little guy to go here he is and there goes his little fuel tanks he's paddling along with his spin block and <laughs> he's just getting destroyed by our main base AI is dead and that's all she wrote so okay oh that's not okay big fight coming Oh wait, no, that's, that's, oh, that's just this guy. Okay, that's no big deal. <laughs> this guy's gonna go out. It's actually not opportune time to attack him. Let's take him out since he's just kind of stuck here in the water. And there we go. So we have succeeded in our mission, cutting through the enemy like butter. I'll see you guys next time.